Good morning, all. Today we will be moving on to the next topic in parallel programming, where we'll be dealing with parallel reduction and the performance limiters that are available. Uh, we'll first see how the parallel uh, reduction is done and what are the performance limiters that are available. Now, before we see the actual algorithms of parallel reduction, what do you understand by the word parallel reduction? So when I say a reduction, reduction is basically used when your problem size is very large and you go for dividing this problem into subparts and then provide a solution to each of the subpart, right? Now, here in parallel reduction, we are taking an example of summation where you could see when I go for sequential reduction, you compulsory require two inputs for your add operation. And then once you get the result of, of your first one, you provide the input of your third. This is your sequential addition, what we actually do. Now, coming to the same summation problem, when I go for parallel thing, you go for employing multiple adders. And to each of the adder, you provide the input. So here, I'll out of four elements, first two elements are being given as input to your first adder, and next uh, two would be given as input to your next adder. And this process continues. So as the number of elements increases here, the adders will also increase. Now, when you see this parallel reduction, it can be done in two ways. The first method is your navy parallel reduction, and that is done using your global memory. So as you could see the elements here, we have a total of 16 elements and out of these 16 elements, first eight elements are direct first eight elements. If you could see zero, uh, one, two, you are directly giving the one input to this adders. So you have eight adders totally starting from zero to seven. And to the adder, I need to even provide the second input, right? So your second input will be starting with your ninth elements. So ninth element would be the input for your first adder. Tenth element would be the input for your next adder. Eleventh, 12th, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So depending on the number of adders, since I have eight adders, right? So the first eight inputs would be given as input and the next eight would be given as second input. Once you perform the addition operation, 60, what is your original problem size 16 elements? So by employing eight adders, I'm by reducing my problem size to eight. So here I got eight elements. So when you want to perform, when you want to go to the next step again, so I'll go for employing four adders, right? And from fifth element, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth would be the input for your second input for four adders and once you do this since four adders are uh, employed here your problem size is getting reduced to four so 16 to 8 8 to 4 and to four four of these elements i provide two particular adders so you can even call them as cores so the number of cores you are employing at each stage so here i'm applying two core elements so when you sum up this would be your final result whatever you're getting right so this is your uh, navy parallel reduction which will be used using your global memory when i say a global memory we have seen different types of memory so global memory is a part of memory where it can be accessed both by your cpu as well as for your gpu but the problem with accessing your global memory is it takes more amount of time so there would be a memory latency so whenever you want the data there would be some amount of latency involved and this global memory takes more amount of time because you have to intermediate at each step you have to store these intermediate results so when you want to store these intermediate results the accessing time would be increased now moving on to the next method here which is nothing but related to your reducing kernels using your shared memory so when you go for uh, the same reduction process using your shared memory you just see at each step how many cores are being employed. So here I'm starting with eight core elements. But at first step, I'm just adding the adjacent elements. So 10 and 1 would be added and you store your results. So you are storing this 11 here. Now coming to your second element, whatever you have in your previous step, the same would be reflected in this particular step. So 8 minus 1, when you are adding up, the result would be 7. And since this element will you get the same value as minus 1. So here, same. When you are adding 0 
and minus 2 it would be minus 2 and the same output would be reflected so the, wherever you don't have anything you just copy the output previous cell value into your current cell value so the size of your array would be as it is as seen in the previous case the size of the array was getting up reduced whereas here we store the same size of the array now coming to the next step here we employ four core elements and when you are employing four core elements the output of 0 and output of 1 what is the output of 0 11 output of 1 is 7 so both of them will be summed up and you store the result similarly output of 2 and output of 3 you perform an operation and store it so you are using four cores here when i further move on to the next step since i have four core elements I'll sum up these two values and I'll sum up these two values. So how many cores would I require here? I require only two core elements. Finally, when you sum up this 24 and 17, you get it. So you only concentrate on the last value. So summation is the addition operation of all these elements. So if you normally manually do the calculation of 16 element summation, check the value whatever you are getting and it should tally, tally with the first element value and the main advantage of this is here we are going for using a shared memory so the time amount of time required for storing the intermediate results in the shared memory will take less amount of time when compared to your global memory having seen uh, navy i mean red, uh, reduction algorithm using your uh, shared memory and global memory in a total application, whether it is summation problem or any other problem, if a particular application is being given, parallel application, what would be the performance limiters of it? What are the main resources when I go for program, uh, programming? One would be your memory, the other would be your CPU. So these are the two resources which are to be utilized properly so that uh, your application performance would not be affected so based on these two resources we can categorize our applications into four types one we call it as compute bound band bit bound latency bound and compute and latency bound so when i say compute bound uh, your total application program is written in such a way that most of uh, the cpu time is utilized only in performing your calculation Whereas if you could see this memory bound, the memory accessing part is limited. So there is a reduction in your memory operations, whereas most of them is bounded to your CPU. When I, when I go for bandwidth bound, CPU is a, a little involved in your computation, whereas most of the time there is a transfer of data. So if I go for a CPU and a GPU, your application is written in such a way that most of the time CPU and GPU is involved in transfer of the data and only some of some amount of time is involved in computation. When I say latency, latency as the uh, term implies it is nothing but the amount of time required for your output to be given back to the user. So there should be a synchronization between your compute and the memory. If you have more amount of memory, obviously you say the latency is very less. So there should be some amount of synchronization between your compute and your memory. When I say compute and latency bound together, both of them are to be at the same proportion. So compute bond basically will be used for simulation type of applications where you want more amount of computation to be done. And latency is basically used when you want to develop your real time systems where even a minute second of your output, if you, if you say that you have to get it, your output in one nanosecond, it is compulsory that the output should be given by the system in one nanosecond. We'll just take an example of your satellite launching. So when you go for the satellite launching, they whenever you find some discrepancy, this is a real time system, right? So your output should be given in less amount of time. So basically when you want to go for a real time systems, we call it as a latency bound. Based on this performance limiters, if I only concentrate on global memory, so global memory, as I told you, when you see the computation part and your memory, more amount of time, the application is spending more amount of time on your memory because global memory will take more amount of time for either fetching the data from the memory or storing the data back into your memory. Either for fetching or for storing, it takes more amount of time. What might be the reasons for this? Uh, why when you want a data, assume CPU or a GPU is giving a request to get the data from your memory. 
if this m uh, either for fetching the data or storing the data as i told you if it is taking more amount of time cpu and gpu will not be working on any other computation rather than they'll simply wait for it so that we call it as a memory stall where you are making a particular device or a processor to wait either for the input or for your output and what might be the reasons for your memory stall is either execution dependency you are not able to fetch the data because you did not get the output or either it could be your memory dependency when you are using your texture memory it can be because of synchronization between your cpu and your gpu instruction fetch operation may take more amount of time and memory throttle memory throttle here is nothing but sometimes your gpu will reduce the speed of your memory so in some particular applications so in that case also you will not be able to fetch the data within that particular time or uh, when you are using your constant memory why because when you go for constant memory it is only the read only value so more than one not two process can use the same memory at the same time or the channel may be busy so these are some reasons where you could get a memory stall you are making a device to wait for the input to be given or output to be provided now when you go for the same share computation when you go for your shared memory you see since the amount of time required for fetching the data or storing the data from the shared memory will be less so when you could compare these two graphs here or two bars computation will be involved in more utilization of your gpu or your cpu will be more in computation rather than in your memory so this are your performance limiters and we have identified so performance limiters basically i told you one is your memory the other is your resources resources here is nothing but your cpu either your memory or your gpu so whenever you are have identified this is either uh, you could see that more amount of time the gpu is spending on your memory you take some optimization strategies or more amount of time you are utilizing your resource and you want a balance between your memory and the cpu so we have to use some optimization strategies which will help us to balance this memory usage as well as your cpu usage 